Thank you for joining today's webcast. We are pleased to have everyone on the line with us today. Today's topic is Employer Branding Essentials, Four Tips on Becoming a Top Company from Cisco and LinkedIn. My name is Becca Feldman and I am the Global Marketing and Education Program Manager for our Talent Brand Solutions team here at LinkedIn. I'm joined by Stacey Takeuchi, a Senior Solutions Consultant on our team, as well as Aaron Rector, a Senior Talent Brand Manager from Cisco. They'll do a little intro to themselves in just a moment. A few logistical things to go over before we dive into the content. Uh, everyone who's on the line will remain on mute throughout the presentation, but if you have any questions uh, during or after the presentation, please feel free to enter them in the Q&A or the chat box. Uh, we'll be monitoring those and we'll be doing a Q&A portion at the end of today's content. Everyone who is on the line as well as everyone who registered for today's webcast will receive a follow-up email in the next few days with a link to the recording as well as a copy of the presentation and a related tip sheet on this topic. Uh, and for everyone who uh, has a few minutes at the end of the webcast, when you exit, you will get a SurveyMonkey link to complete feedback on the webcast. If you have a couple minutes to fill that out, we would greatly appreciate it. We do these webcasts on a regular basis and always want to make sure that we're improving, we're providing information that's valuable to you uh, on an ongoing basis. So we definitely take any feedback that you have into consideration and appreciate it. Uh, and with that, I will pass it over to Stacy and Aaron, uh, and we are excited to have them on the line today. Stacy and Aaron, take it away. Thank you so much, Becca. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Stacy Takeuchi. I'm a senior talent brand consultant at LinkedIn. And what that means is I partner with my clients to create talent attraction strategies to help them hire the best talent on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm lucky enough to work with some of the um, some of the top employers on this list. It's very exciting, um, and one of my my great um, friends and clients is Aaron Rector. I'm happy to to introduce him to you and to share um, his learnings today as well. So, Aaron, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, Stacy. Uh, yeah, my name is Aaron Rector. I am the senior talent brand manager at Cisco. Uh, I've been in um, employer branding space for about five years now, started at uh, Success Factors, then moved over to SAP, which was um, uh, a company that, that acquired Success Factors, ran their, um, their social recruiting department for, um, for about three and a half years, and then uh, came over here to Cisco as a senior talent brand manager, where I work on a, on a really amazing team of about um, 11 people that are, are all around the globe on our team that um, look at how we as a, a um, over you know 80,000 person company um, you know really um, small team but really a uh, big impact in the way we recruit in the way we tell our employee stories uh, and and really showcase the skill as an employer of choice. Great, thank you. I know you guys are going to love the tips that Aaron has to share. I'm really excited about it. So before we get to some of those tips, we will go over the top attractors list. This is a brand new ranking, so I want to share some of the methodology behind the ranking as well as um, the, um, the, the list itself. Um, we will also talk with Aaron about Cisco's approach to talent brand management, um, and then he will be sharing with us tips associated with, with each of the four pillars that we use to create the top attractors list. So let's get started. The top attractors list is really exciting because it is the first ranking of its kind to be based entirely on actions of users. Um, as the world's largest professional network, LinkedIn has a constant pulse on what job seekers are doing about their careers. Our insights team, working with our global editorial team, analyzed literally billions of actions taken by our 433 plus million members to come up with a blended score that we use to rank the winners globally and in Australia, Brazil, France, India, UK, and the US. So how do we determine this list? We use four factors to determine the list. Um, reach, so how well known is the company? 
We factored in how many non-employees attempt to view and connect with the company's employees. Engagement. How much interaction does this brand receive? That included views on the company's career page and company page, reach and engagement of the content that the, the company shares, along with the growth in followers over the past year. Job interest. How much interest do their jobs generate, both the views and the actual applications on their job postings featured on LinkedIn? And finally, new hire staying power. How well a company retains new hires? Basically, after an employee joins, how long do they stick around? We then normalized all of the results to ensure that the companies were measured against their peers versus the total universe of companies. And we excluded companies with less than 500 employees. Let's take a look at a few insights from the roughly 200 companies that made at least one of our list. As you can see here, 48% of the companies are in the technology industry, with software leading the way, followed by retail and consumer products. Given the number of tech companies on the list, it's no surprise that the universities the top attractors hire from most frequently are well-known and respected for their tech degrees. Three of the top five are located in the San Francisco Bay Area, but only 11 of the top 40 companies on the global list are headquartered there. So this tells us that talent is definitely being recruited away from the Bay as well. The majority of the companies featured on our list are headquartered in the US, followed by Europe, and then China. So why should we care about making this list, being a top employer, and really about branding in general? Because your reputation as an employer is everything. If you have a good one, top candidates want to work for you and employees want to stay. And if you have a bad one, it will cost you. Employers who don't invest in their reputations pay up to 4,723 more per employee hired. And half of candidates won't even consider working for a company with a bad employer brand, no matter how high the salary offer. A question you've probably faced, is the extra investment in promoting our talent brand really worth it? And now we can categorically say, yes, it is. So without further ado, let's take a look at this list. Here we have the global top 40. As I mentioned earlier, there are regional lists as well, um, but we're, we're focusing in on the global one this morning. Um, I'm excited to be able to highlight um, today the work of my friend and client, Aaron Rector, and his talent brand team. You can see Cisco here at number 22. The companies on this list have several practices in common, and we'll explore those pra practices today through the lens of the Cisco organization. They have done some really impressive work in this space, and I know that you will be inspired. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, Stacy, Cisco is a huge company. They have a lot of resources. Aaron mentioned 11 people on his team, but I want you to know, and I really cannot stress this enough, companies of all sizes can incorporate these tips at virtually no cost. We want you to take away a few things that you can do today. And in this presentation and the follow-up materials that you will receive, you will see links to some of our most practical and easy to incorporate tips um, via links to eBooks and, and tip sheets. So be on the lookout for that in the email that you get after this webinar. All right, with that, let's dig in. Erin, can you first um, start by telling us a little bit about the talent brand team at Cisco? Absolutely, and and I think to reiterate what you're saying, Stacey, yeah, this, this is, well, I know that I, I've spoken to uh, at a number of different um, seminars and webinars and, and know that um, a lot of you will see uh, some like a big team like this and see um, there's a lot of resources that, that I have but that you may not. Um, but know that there is um, very easy ways to, to really implement um, if you're a one-person team or a two-person team and say, where do I start? What are the, what are the ways I can make the most impact? Um, just hopefully we can um, go through some of these really quickly today that you can um, start applying. Um, but with Cisco, it, it's, it's really been an interesting story because about a year ago um, was when my manager, Macy Andrews, uh, took over the, the Now Talent Brand team. 
um, and really refocused it and looked at um, how we were really communicating with um, our own employees, getting employee engagement up and saying, what exactly are we trying to say from an employment brand standpoint? Um, and so we had really two big areas that we wanted to focus on. One was connecting to our employees, and the second was really aligning ourselves with the recruiting teams because I feel like for a long time um, employment brand um, was trying to find that balance and was probably focusing too much on um, just kind of a job promotion, recruitment marketing aspect, which is a very important and vital part of it. But um, what we've seen, what we've learned over the last uh, really just a year of, it, of changing our structure is um, that when we really engage our employees and we source material uh, on social and see what our employees are saying and not being afraid of, um, you know, sites where or in mediums that we don't necessarily control the messaging enough, um, that our employees feel free to, to share, um, then that really uh, drives home a, an authentic message. You can go to the next slide, Stace. So I, I, I wanted to share this real fast at a high level because many people are, are um, interested to see how our team is broken up. Um, so we have it broken up into uh, four pillars. Uh, the first is social and content. Um, that uh, includes um, a, a very talented team um, within our team that is led by Carmen Collins, who um, really does an amazing job uh, of using social media to uh, connect with current employees and tell their stories and using those stories uh, to attract talent. And so we're across a number of different social channels, which I'll share in a minute, um, and, and they do a very good job of partnering with employee comms, um, uh, corporate comms, and, and making sure that we have all those connections there, also the different lines of business, because there's a lot of different elements uh, that go into our talent brand messaging and what we're trying to share. But our whole filter that we're trying to put it through is no matter what, we're sharing about our technology, sharing about a team, we always want to try to do it through the lens of what is it like for a normal employee. The second thing is events. Uh, this is something that uh, was new to me when I joined the team is really uh, making sure that we have a person on our team aligned with the different events, whether it's on campus events for university um, or on campus for, for Cisco events um, or even bigger events like uh, Grace Hopper, Women in Technology and things like that. And so having someone who really makes sure that when we show up to events that we are, we come with the right collateral branding, messaging uh, and experience because it is a huge way that we uh, find talent and that we um, really put our best foot forward. The next one is our career website. We're actually going through a process right now of redesigning our whole career website. Uh, it's a massive project, um, but one that we'll touch on in a minute. But this, we have a standalone because it's such a huge resource for candidates, and, and so we'll touch on that in a minute. And the last is recruitment marketing, which is where um, I think this, uh, you know, where a lot of work that I do with Stacy uh, and the, the great team at LinkedIn, this falls into really being strategic and how we're um, uh, targeting, using LinkedIn for targeting, creating engaging content for uh, that support our hiring needs. Again, it goes with making sure we're aligned with our recruitment uh, hiring demand and things like that. And then, but it also includes awards. Um, this is top attractors list uh, and other awards out there for great places to work. Uh, these are things that people look for, candidates look for, and if you make these lists, um, then, then that's something that um, really ups your um, your talent brand uh, in the space. Great, thank you. So, trying trying to rush through this, getting, knowing that we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. Uh, we are at Cisco, like I said, is is where uh, we have uh, a number of different uh, social channels: Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we're even on Snapchat now, and exploring with that it has been really fun. Um, thing to do. We have a blog that we utilize a lot. These are some of those things that, that I think any team can start doing. And what I would recommend uh, doing is, is using this to see what employees are currently saying. We actually use this right now um, as um, to, to connect with our employees. We even have a program called Social Ambassadors um, that, that we are training people, employees, how to uh, to share stories externally. A lot of people want to share what's going on, and so we have a, a resource for them to go and see what's going on that they can share externally. And that's a great segue, Erin, into our first 
kind of component of, of the list and understanding um, your reach. So wh when, you, when you think about expanding your reach, um, you know, your employees, they are your unofficial recruiters and marketers. And they're really the key to making your brand more well-known. So showing them how to use LinkedIn and other social media sites, creating a, a social ambassadors program like Erin just mentioned, is really the best way to help represent your brand. And your employees will amplify your message further than really any official channel ever, ever would or could. A few tips. Um, encourage your employees to update their profiles. We see that this is uh, most often done um, really successfully by utilizing new hire orientation, um, sharing that social vision, sharing and encouraging employees to be proud of the, the job change that they just made. Make it easy for them to post and engage with content. Let them know what you are putting out there on social. Um, and support employees when it comes to expanding their, their networks and being social. And I think this is really something that Cisco does extremely well, um, is really providing that, that support. Erin, can you share just a little bit with us about what that looks like for you guys? Yeah, so, so this is really something when um, I think a few years ago, many companies, big companies, were very scared about how to, um, to monitor and to regulate what employees were saying. And what we found out in this, the philosophy we've taken is um, we, we know that there are conversations going on um, outside of anything we can control. And so we want to just encourage employees and to equip them to, to, to share what they're doing. And the great thing that we found is that this, this has actually been the number one way that we source content for our social channels and for um, everything from blogs and that then ties into um, the sponsored content that we use on LinkedIn because we actually see employees out using certain hashtags that we um, use within Cisco and they see it on Instagram, they see it um, on, on Snapchat and on different, on Facebook and see what employees are doing. And then we actually go find those employees internally and say, hey, we saw this great thing. A, can we use your photo? Or B, like, can you tell us more? Can we create this into a blog post? We want to find out more about what you're wanting to do. Um, so this was really something that has that is, is really been a great resource. The other cool thing is um, down at the bottom you see Love Where You Work. This is actually something that um, uh, Carmen on our team does a great job that um, seeing what, what current trends are going on within social media, what hashtags are being used that are relevant. This was actually Love Where You Work was actually a hashtag that was started from uh, the team at, at Twitter, um, but it actually grew outside of that and this became um, something that a lot of companies picked up on and a lot of employees wanted to love where you work and share it. So we had a campaign where we had employees uh, submitting photos, we're using the hashtag love where you work with the hashtag we are Cisco. Um, so that's really, has just been some really awesome stories that have come out of that, that um, for a company this big that maybe we wouldn't have found if we were just relying on internal um, sources. Yeah, I, I love that tip. I think it's so practical for everyone listening. If you um, don't have a hashtag that represents your um, your employer brand, your talent brand, life at is, is a common one. I love We Are Cisco. It's something that's easy and free to implement, but then taking that a step further, like Erin said, and, and, and searching through those hashtags and picking out those employee stories that are really powerful, people are already sharing, so you can leverage that share for a bigger story. So great advice, Karen. Thank you. So when we think about number number two and engagement, there are so many different ways that you can build engagement. Um, your career page, really, both on LinkedIn and on your .com site, is, is really that central hub for your talent brand. It's where you showcase your culture, your vision, and the career paths that you offer. Um, Cisco is actually going through a complete redesign of this site now. Erin mentioned that earlier. Erin, um, talk to us a little bit about the insights you've gained through this process. Yeah, so if you go right now to cisco.com slash careers, uh, you will most likely not be super impressed. Um, it, it, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little bit dated and something that we're working on, on really um, updating. But, but what we really are realizing and focusing on is your career site is the number one place it can come to explore. Uh, it's not social, it's not Glassdoor, it's not all these other different sites, but it, it, your career site should be something that you uh, really put a lot of thought and work into. It's the place where you actually probably need to be really driving people to from all these different locations. This is the, this is the kind of the top of the funnel, and hopefully that leads into a very streamlined process through your ATS. 
Um, with us, our, this is our, our little mantra vision for our career site, which is uh, the vision of the Cisco career site is to create a dynamic and engaging site for job seekers to quickly and easily discover career opportunities at Cisco, educate about the amazing culture, benefits, and programs that await them at Cisco. So, um, you know, this is part of this is people are coming with different purposes. Some of them are wanting to learn more about it. Other people are just great. They know they know they want to work for Cisco. They know they're looking for a specific job. So easily being able to let them, um, you know, find the job they're looking for and, and educating them along the way. So some tips um, that I would say as you're thinking about if you're going through a process or thinking about a new career website, um, big one right now that we're excited about is, is uh, responsive design and mobile apply. Uh, making sure your, your career site is, is mobile friendly to, to be accessed on a tablet, that your content um, is all formatted that, and that the, the apply process can be done through um, mobile as well. Um, the other one is really big, showcasing employee testimonials. The, the user testing we did about what people are looking for is they want to see what is it like to work there from the eye of an employee. Um, you can have great split videos from this kind of high level, you know, marketing pitch, um, but those day in the life videos, um, you know, even as niche as they can get, definitely gives a better insight to what it's worth there. Uh, strategic user pathing throughout the site to easily find information. Really think about the way your site is laid out and the navigation. I would say working, you know, make sure whoever you're partnering with, whether it's an internal or external vendor, um, you know, really thinking about what are the uses and what are, how do we quickly and easily let people find information they're looking for. Um, another one to point out to is linking to third-party sites for fans to explore more. This is having your social feeds there, linking to the blog, um, things like your reviews on Glassdoor, or um, another thing that we are implementing is see who you're connected with at LinkedIn. This is a great uh, widget that they have where you can see I'm connected to my first degree, these people at Cisco, but I also have some other connections, and you can let them start connecting that way. Um, and then five, last, focus on the visuals. Um, spend a lot of time thinking of what's your visual style, having, can you source photos from Instagram, from social to really give a good flavor of, these aren't the high gloss marketing photos, there are some places for that, um, but really to showcase some authentic uh, visuals. So uh, going off of this, you know, thinking of different channels and different purposes, for talent brand and employment brand, each channel has a different purpose and use. Uh, and I say that because a lot of people, when they start, especially with social, they think that kind of one size fits all. They'll take a piece of content and they'll kind of disperse it through all the different channels, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, but I, I would encourage you to think of, of all your different channels as kind of a different medium and therefore kind of thinking, how do we strategically create content for this? For LinkedIn specifically, um, you know, we really use it. We know that, that um, you know, there's so much great data that, that Stacey and the LinkedIn team has given us to see who's our audience, who are we reaching, who are we targeting. Um, and so we found out where I think at the beginning we focused a lot on culture and fun and really pushing that. Um, we realized that we, we had been lacking a little bit in really driving um, content that has some business impact and, and talking about our technology, our solutions. Um, some things that I'll be honest, I'm not as well versed in. There's some conversations, technical conversations that go over my head. But that's my job, and I would encourage all of you um, become an expert in your business and what you're what you're doing, so that way you can know. Um, yeah, there's some great, cool cultural pieces that we want to highlight. Um, but but people, especially in the technical world, um, they want to know what are the solutions I'm building? What am I going to be working on? Am I making a difference? Uh, so I really uh, encourage you to do that. Um, this also just looked at at using. Um, you know, we we've been using the career pages aspect on LinkedIn. Uh, to, to be strategic in how we approach different recruiting needs. Uh, the example that we, we've just recently launched is a, a Greater China um, page because we had our, our China team reach out to us and say, we have really trouble, um, you know, with our talent brand over there, our messaging, how we're getting that out there. Um, obviously, there's some limitations to things like access on, to social media uh, on, in certain aspects of China. And so this was something we were able to build a very quickly turn around and have uh, this page built out in a dual language, both in Mandarin and English, uh, to really help um, meet the need of a specific business unit uh, region there uh, to give them really a great experience. 
Yeah, this, this is a really great example. Here's the, the China page again, like Erin mentioned, and then just here's a, an example of the global kind of um, more default page for Cisco. So you can see these two different views. Um, I, I wish I was able to, to show here on this slide, um, but we have really exciting news. Um, we're going to be redesigning LinkedIn's career pages as well. So um, a lot of the tips that Erin mentioned about is showcasing employee perspectives, um, really authentic, transparent, kind of employee-generated photos, um, more visuals, all of those same tips have been um, incorporated into the launch and redesign of our new careers pages. Um, I think if when we get off this webinar, you guys go to LinkedIn.com and check, um, search for LinkedIn as a company on LinkedIn and um, go to the careers page, I think you might see a sneak peek of that new page, so be sure to check it out. Um, it is coming very, very soon. We're really excited about it. Um, one and this thing, is even the, uh, Oh, go ahead, Erin. I was just going to say, Erin said, Stace, don't forget to tell everybody <laughs> that um, on those new career pages, what, what's really exciting is you'll be able to toggle between different page views. So like for, for the Cisco team, they have this page for China, they have this kind of global default page. But they all have, also have really, really great pages built out for security specifically or for engineering, uh, for software engineering. And so to be able to showcase those different views but allow people to explore them as well um, was something that we heard loud and clear from our, our customers and have been incorporated into that next version. Is that what you were going to say, Aaron? Yep, yep, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so moving on to the third component, um, boosting interest in your jobs. You know, your, your job descriptions are often the first point of contact that candidates have with your company, um, particular, particularly on LinkedIn because we, we serve relevant jobs um, so often to our members. So they're really prime real estate for promoting your employer brand. Um, we have millions of jobs on LinkedIn and distribute them to candidates, obviously, based on skill set, but it's your job description that compels them to view and apply. Describing what it's really like to work at your company um, helps you appeal to more candidates. You know, the way that we think about it is to get more views, you want to stick to standard job titles, but to get more applies, you need to show off your culture and values. And it's interesting, as Erin and I were talking about this webinar, that Cisco has actually just gone through a complete review of, well, it might not be complete yet, and it's a massive undertaking. Any of you that deal in job descriptions know this, but a review of what those job descriptions look like and how can they make them more focused on culture and values. So, Erin, I'd love for you to share a few of those tips with the audience. Yeah, so, so the first thing we looked at is really just um, trying to really create natural and, and inviting language in our job descriptions. When you read so many job descriptions, it, it's kind of pulled from the legal department and a little bit of just kind of you know, HR, very cut and dry, bare bones, and, and um, there was kind of no life or kind of uh, personality to them. And so really looking at humanizing the job descriptions uh, because, because data has shown when you use that, I mean, when you change up that language and have it more conversational and tone inviting that, that it does drive applies. Um, and then the next aspect is, is highlighting team culture. Um, really, really, this is just the number one feedback that people keep, keep bringing back is, is what is it like to work on the team? I get, I, I can, you know, give me the roles and responsibility, or the responsibilities and the, and the qualifications I need. That is, we understand that standard. But, but in a, you know, short amount of time, paint a picture of what it's like. Um, the team dynamics, the team culture, um, you know, what even things like, you know, is this a global team? Is this a team that you're mainly working virtual? Or is this a team that all works out of one office location? Whatever that is, uh, spend a little more time, and, and it takes, that really takes educating recruiters, right? And, and, and um, but working with the recruiters to, to say, hey, when you're writing the job descriptions, these are the types of things we want in there, um, which can be challenging, um, but it really pays off. Those are great tips. Thank you. Um, Aaron was gracious enough to provide us with two examples. Given time, we're not going to go into them, but the, they will be in the published version of the PowerPoint, so you'll see a kind of a before and an after. Um, and it's really interesting to read um, both of them, and, and you can very clearly see the difference. So, you know, please 
feel free to dig into that um, when, you, when you get this deck. So for the last um, new hire staying power, you know, your, your employer brand is just as important to your employees as it is to your candidates. It's a, really a force that helps keep them. And if you empower your employees with tools, skills, and information so that they thrive, you make them happier and more satisfied. Um, happier, more satisfied hires make um, better brand promoters, um, obviously, and they're more likely to stay. And it's, you know, what we've found is that it's really important when you're thinking about your employer brand and how you are positioning your organization in the marketplace um, to really take a hard look at um, the authenticity of that message um, because, because it's so important in that hiring process to make sure that, the, that what you're saying as a, as a brand team is really what the candidate is going to experience um, when they begin the process. Um, so Erin, talk to us a little bit about that um, candidate experience and how you guys can ensure that smooth transition. Yeah, so the first thing is part of, as part of the, the new redesign of our career site, we're actually developing um, a, a cool new interactive kind of PDF, interactive, interactive infographic uh, that lays out very clearly what the application process is. And part of that is just setting expectations. And that actually ties all the way through into the application process through um, the hiring process and up to your first day. So, so really giving a clear path of the, the candidate journey uh, of this is how you, where you, where you're starting and this is, you know, the, your first day at, at Cisco. Um, but through that, really the messaging throughout all this just needs to be authentic. Um, you know, this is why those, those, those stories of day in the life, uh, even things like the reviews, uh, you know, on, on, on Glassdoor and other places, like, don't be afraid of those and don't be afraid to point people to those, uh, the good and the bad, because no company's perfect, no one's going to have, you know, across the board just perfect reviews, um, but they need to know, like, don't, don't paint a picture of what, what it's like to work there if that's not accurate. Um, and, and I think just really, like I, like I said, just as, as you're messaging, as you're working on your messaging, uh, authenticity is key. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. So hopefully that was a, a helpful kind of um, set of tips surrounding those four pillars that we use to, um, to create our top attractors list. Erin, um, we really appreciate the, the insights that you've provided. It's really valuable, so thank you. Um, and now we're going to turn it um, back over to Becca to help field our Q&A. Wonderful. Thank you, Stacy and Erin. Uh, congrats again to Erin and Cisco for making our top attractors list this year. A uh, quick reminder before we jump into the Q&A, uh, everyone that is, uh, has attended today as well as everyone who registered for this webcast, will receive that follow-up email within the next few days with a copy of the presentation and a link to the recording as well as the employer branding essentials tip sheet. Uh, and then one thing as well, we are joined by Esther Cruz for the Q&A portion of this. Esther is a content marketing manager on our marketing team here at LinkedIn and was intimately involved in this year's top attractors list. So if anyone has specific questions about the top attractors list, Esther is here to help us answer those questions. Um, and so with that, we will uh, answer uh, some questions. And so to kick it off, Erin, um, can you tell us more about the Employee Ambassador Program that you mentioned, and sort of how that works at Cisco? Yeah, so this is a, uh, a series of trainings that uh, our team has done that utilizes um, a couple different elements. One is um, kind of just educating, uh, educating employees on uh, the different social channels um, that are available that we interact with and we use is by no means all encompassing because there are so many different social channels out there that we've taken, you know, chosen a few. Um, and then we, we actually use a, a tool internally um, it's actually powered by VoiceStorm, I believe. Uh, it's actually also a tool that we use that, um, at SAP. And I would recommend if you're trying to figure out a way to, to have a way uh, that employees can share and source content, this would be uh, one that I would recommend a voice storm, and uh, this is where employees can actually upload and submit content, and this is all internal for, for teams. You can break it out and tag it different ways, and then you can actually go and share and share it to your Twitter or your Facebook or your LinkedIn, um, and so you can do that as well. But, but the trainings themselves, we actually have badges and awards when you go through a certain training that just um, talks about 
um, you know, here's the, here, look, thinking about why, why employees share, helping them figure out, you know, what their goals are and, and what makes, um, you know, even just put small things like formatting and, and thinking about the different channel uses. Um, because what we don't want is we don't want uh, there to be this tool where you go and check off a box and then I say, you know, every, every two hours it's going to just randomly select a piece of content and post it out. Uh, we really encourage our employees to be purposeful and, and selective in what they share. Uh, we don't want, I, I don't want to be spammed by, by, you know, my friend who works at a company and everything I see on my Facebook or Twitter is just this kind of prepackaged something um, about their company. I want them to, to be, like, invested in what they're sharing. And so that, that's really a big thing that we do is we kind of talk to them about, like, really being purposeful and not just kind of automating it. Um, and then from there, just really being a resource for, for when teams come and say, hey, I'm, we're, we're trying to figure this out, or we want to do this, we want to have a, a buying competition, or we want to utilize Instagram, and how do we use hashtags, you know, correctly? We just we try to be a resource for, for teams that want to do that. Great. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, before I move on to the next question, I'll also mention, because I'd be remiss if I didn't, uh, LinkedIn does have a great new tool, fairly new, called LinkedIn Elevate that's also an employee advocacy tool that makes it really easy for employees to be able to share on your company's behalf. So if you're interested in that, definitely get in touch with your LinkedIn relationship manager and they can help you with that. Um, but next question, Stacey, uh, this is probably one for you. Uh, question around the new career pages. What do we need to do to prepare for the changes to the career pages, and when is this rolled out? That's a great question. I thought I might be opening a can of worms with that sneak peek. So um, <laughs> thank you for asking the question. Um, what's great about the new rollout is that our company um, page admins will have an opportunity to um, see and build content in the admin portal before those go live. We have a lot of communication coming, so trust me, we will not leave you stranded. Um, it will be, um, you know, a lot of it will be in product kind of notification that this is happening. Um, if you hadn't planned for this and you don't have time to, to address it right away, that's okay too because the, any content that you have on your career page now will automatically be migrated over to that new um, admin experience and you can you know, choose to leave it as is or make modifications from there. So essentially it'll be pre-populated with the content that you already have. Um, you'll have about a month in that admin can space to, um, to modify pages, et cetera, when, um, before they start going live in the fall. Great, thanks Stacey. Uh, question for you, Erin, you mentioned that you use Snapchat. This is obviously uh, a pretty new use case, I think, for Snapchat in terms of talent brand and, and recruitment. So curious right. kind of how you're using it and if you're seeing ROI or how you're measuring ROI from something like Snapchat. Yeah, so um, Snapchat's just been a lot of fun. What we do is we actually find um, uh, key employees who are, um, who we kind of started reaching out seeing who, uh, we kind of had people that were already gone through our social ambassador program. We reached out to them and said, hey, if you're using Snapchat, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to connect with you. Um, because we, we actually have uh, individuals, depending on what campus they're on and, and events, who actually take over our Snapchat channel. So it's just kind of a Snapchat takeover. We give them, kind of go through kind of the parameters and guidelines, but we want them to have fun. Um, but we uh, we have them, you know, personally go through and, and um and snap through through an event or a day. Uh, the ROI is a little bit harder because um, because I don't think Snapchat was kind of originally built as this kind of a platform where people wanted a whole lot of analytics and, and data and things like that. And so you know and they're working on that. I know that they're, that Snapchat we, we've had conversations with them to say, hey, we're wanting to you know kind of be able to, to dive deeper into who's following us and and uh, you know where are they located, et cetera. Um, you know, right now I think we just are able to look at, at views, and I think that's kind of the extent of it. But I do know that Snapchat is, is, is going to be rolling out some better analytics soon. But it's overall, it's just been a lot of fun, and it's been something successful that, that again, it goes to that, that thing where it's kind of, it feels unfiltered, right? And it has a lot of life and a lot of, you know, it, it's a complete opposite of, of the kind of PR marketed, you know, like everything is, is pre-planned and approved, right? It's, it's just real, it's on the fly, um, and it, it's a lot of fun. And so we've even had, um, you know, Snapchat kind of Q&As with our CEO, 
um, and, and some of our all hands and things like that. So um, I would highly recommend just exploring. There's a great resource by um, HR Open Source um, that's a, uh, a blog post of, of some of the best um, people within recruiting and, and talent brand and individuals and companies that are using it right now. Uh, so I'd, I'd recommend HR Open Source. Um, go to their blog and, and it was this in the last month or so. Great, thanks. Uh, next question can really probably be for both uh, Aaron and Stacey. I'm sure you both have good, uh, good opinions and thoughts on this. But the question is around, you know, for companies that don't really have a huge budget for employer branding, you know, not, not everybody is Cisco, uh, you know, or, or a team of 11 people or even one person that's dedicated solely to employer branding, you know, what would kind of be the first thing that you would recommend to get started or, or what's kind of your top one or two things that even a small company that doesn't have a huge amount of resources uh, should be thinking about doing when it comes to building their talent brand and, and hopefully becoming a top, top director? So I don't know what you think, Erin, but I, I think leveraging your employees is always the best first place to start. Um, before I worked at LinkedIn, I was a client of LinkedIn, I actually talked about talent brand on a shoestring budget and what that means. And part of that to me was um, every employee at my 2,000 person company was a recruiter. So how do I help them recruit and market for us? And so the things that Erin has talked about with the hashtags, with identifying the employees that really have a story to tell and want to be social, and then pulling those stories out of the social media um, buzz and, and really highlighting them, I think is the absolute number one thing I would do. Rallying employees around having a LinkedIn profile, talking about what it's like to be at, uh, to work at that company and, um, and, and pulling all of that together, that, that would be where I would start. Erin, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I honestly think that the number one place I would start is finding who on your recruiting team uh, is, is passionate about this, passionate about using social, um, hopefully can, can leverage, maybe create a blog um, for, your, for your company and just say once a month uh, we're going to do a, a little employee highlight, you know, spotlight kind of blog post and just start really small. Um, but but you know, send out, you know, work with your head of HR um, and, and say, you know, hey, we want to we message out to our employees, hey, we're here, we're on these channels, um, this is the hashtag we're using, and start, um, you know, seeing what they're saying and, and monitoring what they're doing on social, and then, you know, being able to go and, and reshare from there. Really, again, it's leveraging your employees for the content. Great. Sort of on that note, Erin, you mentioned that Cisco has a blog. Is it something that's open to anyone to write on it, or do you have certain people that are dedicated writers for the blog? Do you select kind of subject matter experts or employees that have gone through the ambassador program? How do you decide who is featured on the blog? Yeah, so, so the blog is uh, any any articles that come out on the blog on our life at Cisco blog are, are all go through a process where they kind of are kind of do a preliminary uh, uh, conversation with uh, our head of social. Uh, to discuss what story they're telling. We try to think proactively in terms of if there is, um, you know, a neat, unique, um, you know, whether it's like we, we do like a, a, a month of service and we want to highlight, you know, um, some, some cool uh, things that are going on during that month and try to think ahead for some of those. Um, but we, we just really, we, we leave it really open. So, like, what do we find? We're like, we're, we do a thing like we're kind of like news reporters um, where we're going through saying what are what is relevant right now, what's going on, what are cool stories that we can showcase, and there's no kind of specific format that we always, always follow um, other than um, it trying to be as, um, you know, we don't, we don't write it, we just kind of tweak it and edit it. We really leave it to, um, to our employees. We give them some guidelines and some tips, um, but we let them kind of go crazy. Gotcha. Uh, next question uh, for either of you. How have you managed employee privacy concerns when approaching employees with engage, you know, about engaging their support with your initiatives? Uh, what, if any, challenges have you experienced? Employee privacy concerns. So this is something where you know it's totally self-selective. If I'm understanding the question correctly, you know it's totally self-selective. There, um, you know, this is for we we really leave it open to who who wants to share. Like we're not forcing anybody to share. Um, we, we're not saying, um, you know, we need you to all go, you know, 
share this on LinkedIn or, or write a review on Glassdoor or anything like that. These are the people that we try to collaborate with that are actually already out there sharing, and that tends to be a lot of our uh, millennial workforce, the people coming in uh, at right, you know, outside of the university in the first or second job um, that, are, that are already engaged on social and are already sharing things. Um, so that, that's kind of it from a, you know, and, and then just having, you know, when we approach them to reshare a photo or anything, we don't ever do that without permission. Um, but it's as simple as, a, as an email and just saying, hey, we found this great photo. We saw it was tagged on Instagram. You know, are you okay with us reusing it? And, and some people say, no, I would rather you not, and that's totally fine. Great. Uh, really good to say. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna. I was just gonna add one thing that is about the new career pages that are coming that are going to feature some some opportunities to really showcase the employee voice. Um, the same kind of thing applies. The, the people um, that want to share, they're submitting their photos or they're submitting their blog posts, and then you know, kind of from, from that point, you get to make that choice. Um, so in, engaging the people that are that are already have already basically shown that they want to be social and that they want to be those brand ambassadors is the best way to avoid those privacy issues. Great point. Thanks, Stacey. Uh, really interesting question uh, next. Uh, for Aaron, do you recommend creating separate social uh, separate social channels for employer branding versus your general Cisco branding, or do you manage and post the employer brand content from the main social uh, channel? So, uh, asked another way, and I think this helps clarify. So, uh, good way to ask this from the person who asked the question. Basically, when do you make the switch from at Cisco to at We Are Cisco? Good question. Yeah, so this is, this is I, I think, a really important, important point to think about and because really, you know, our, your, your kind of corporate brand channels would be, you know, something that is, you know, talking about your product, talking to, to customers, um, you know, whether that's a, you know, consumer product or a business product. Um, that's really where, if you're speaking to customers, um, that's where your corporate channels are um, most used. Not saying that there's not crossover content, because there is some of that, um, but that's really where we kind of differentiate uh, from there. We are speaking to, we kind of say our audience is, is our employees and hopefully future employees. And so talking about things that, and that can also be, um, you know, like I said, kind of products or technology or things they're working on, but it's through the lens and the story of, of our employees. Um, you know, that can be everything from, you know, there are lots of companies that have a lot of corporate social responsibility, how they're giving back. That can go in, in both different ways. So it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of how you take a story and, and how you write it kind of will, will help guide which, which channel it should be on. But I would highly recommend there being two different channels because they are two distinct audiences. Thanks. Uh, question for Stacey. Uh, since we're relaunching the career pages, can you give us some reasoning behind this? Was it due to bounce rate and analytics reasons, or is it just time for a refresh? Great question. It really was time for a refresh, don't you guys think? <laughs> um, no, we yeah. had so much client feedback. I think it was, um, I would say, hundreds of hours our product team spent um, talking with our, our customers and understanding what they really wanted to see. And we all know that we've, we're moving into such a, a visual world and our career pages just weren't keeping up with what people, the look and feel that people expected, and even the functionality. So to be able to share more photos, more video, more rich media, more engaging, um, you know, showcasing of employees and, and that really transparent kind of approach. So um, I'm so excited because I felt like, yeah, the refresh was, was so necessary, but that's really the, the reason behind it. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I'm super excited for the refresh as well. I've been at LinkedIn for about five and a half years. Uh, so I've seen from what was version one of the career pages to the, the, the second version after that, and now what will be the, the new version launching very shortly. I think you'll all be really excited to see it. It, it really looks fantastic and does a much better job at bringing, bringing a company's culture to life. So I'm excited for everyone to see it. Uh, last question, and then we will have to end the session for today. We're already a few minutes over, but wanted to take time to answer the questions. Uh, this question wasn't directed to anyone, but I'm assuming it's probably for Aaron. And the question is, do you have an employee referral program? We do have an employee referral program. Um, it's something that, that's 
it, we're, we're also looking at, at um, updating, especially in terms of the, the way we use it. The problem with it is, with it is company that's the size of Cisco. Um, it, there's so many different stipulations from a legal standpoint, depending upon country, region, et cetera. And so um, we, there's internal resource and site that, that is um, where we most utilize our employee referral program. Um, but we're, we're trying to figure out, that's one of the reasons like with LinkedIn and LinkedIn widget on our career site, a team who you're connected with, that, that we feel like being able to add a little bit uh, that we can to say, hey, you're connected with this person um, that, you, that you may know um, at Cisco um, can help, A, be, be someone who can answer some questions that's not just from the recruiting team, uh, but B, help again with referrals because referrals are such a huge way to, um, you know, for, for the, the, the quality of hire um, has, has shown that, that referrals are the best source of quality of hire. So, uh, we do have one where, where again, this is we're, we're going through a big, um, a lot of changes at Cisco in terms of um, our, our recruiting organization and TA and how we're messaging these things out. So um, it's not a thing that our team touches as closely, um, but but it is going through a change. Great, thank you. Uh, well, with that, we are out of time for today. Uh, if there were any questions that we didn't get a chance to answer, I apologize that we didn't make it to them, uh, but definitely feel free to reach out to your LinkedIn relationship manager or your talent brand consultant. I'm sure they would be happy to discuss that topic with you and hopefully get all of your questions answered. Again, as a reminder, you will all get a copy of the presentation, the recording, and a link to the Employer Branding Essentials tip sheet. Uh, and again, if you do have a minute or two to fill out the feedback survey after you exit today's webcast, I would very much appreciate it. And again, thank you to Stacy and Aaron for joining us. It was wonderful to have you, and I think you had great insights to share with our audience today. Thank, thank you. So much.